Lee, who comes to us from MIT, and he heads the Mechanical Engineering <coughs> Design Department of, of Robotics. And if you look over the program by robotics, you can see that there are a number of very interesting applications and avenues for research and application for robotics. And uh, he's going to shed some light on that for us. So please help me give a warm Astro Assembly welcome to Dr. Dubowski. Thank you, Dr. M.G. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, lovely to be here. Uh, it's an interesting. My youth goes back to where I spent my earliest day, professional days, building very large telescopes, um, including working on the Hubble Space Telescope. But we try not to talk about that too much. Um, um, I'm going to talk today about what we call microbox for um, exploration. Maybe we, maybe we can do without this. See how that works. Can you hear me if I speak this way? Yes. That would be more comfortable. Um, for surface and subsurface exploration of caves of the bodies of the solar system. Um, and this is a project um, which started out, it's actually been sponsored by NASA's Institute for Advanced Concepts. And um, the the role of NASA's Institute for Advanced Concepts, NIAC, is to look at concepts and projects that um, are out in the future some, so in the, in, the, in the 10 to 40 year time frame. And so they asked me, can you do something that may not be achievable, or probably will not be achievable, or will not be achievable in the next in before 10 to 40 years, and I said, well, I can probably guarantee you that I can do something that may never be achievable. <laughs> so that sort of led to this work, which um, has really been a lot of fun. Um, and these are some concept, concept drawings. The idea is that you'd like to be able to explore very large spaces on um, the planets of the solar system, uh, particularly um, uh, Mars, and more recently your president has decided to take a giant step forward and go to the moon. If you can explain that to me, let me know, but that's... Um, anyway, so the idea is that what we've been doing to date with the, with the Sojourner Opportunity and um, Spirit and Opportunity, the Sojourner Spirit Opportunity a series of exploration, the next Martian Explorer is MSL. They're point exploration vehicles. <coughs> In other words, they're vehicles that are landed in a spot and just look around in, in some place. So, I mean, you know, it's like you get a very small sampling of what's really there. I mean, it's the equivalent of landing a, a, um, um, a explorer, say, in Texas and assuming that there's life, intelligent life on Earth. You may get <laughs> you may in fact get you know some funny thing. So the idea would be to explore large areas with many many explorers, but the delivery costs are so high, you really want to make these small, lightweight, and effective. The other thing is that there are caves on the bodies of the solar system. They're everywhere. And you'd really like to go down and see what's in the cave. So explore large areas and also subterranean environments. Um, so here's sort of a conceptual movie, I hope you can see it, of a lander coming in, a uh, balloon-like landing system that was, has been used by NASA for the last um, several missions, um, and in which case you'd drop these... Um, these pods down, um, they would land on a, um, um, in some place on the surface of, say, Mars or Moon. Uh, they would open up and you'd get little balls that would hop out, micro explorers. Um, and then they would hop out over the surface. Now, say, which we show here is a couple of dozen, in fact, you could land a thousand or more of these balls. Um, and they spread out over the surface of the planet um, um, and explore large areas, uh, almost like the red tide that we knew as kids would take over the, you know, 
the surface of the earth. Um, a few political points there. And the younger people won't remember at all. But, um, Those so, communist Texans. What? Those communist Texans. <laughs> I wanted the moon. Right. So anyway, so that's what it is. They would also mind, might find their wet would be, could be dropped close to cave entrances by these pods, airlifts, astronauts, or dropped off the back of a, um, of a rover, a conventional rover, where they'd go down, they'd hop down through the caves, and they would um, distribute themselves, establishing a local area network where they would uh, be able to communicate back up to the surface and therefore back to some orbiting system. I should point out, in case you're getting cold, is that I forgot to bring the charger for my laptop. So the consequence is this talk will have a finite length. <laughs> so, and if you have any questions, feel, feel, feel free to ask them. Um, what, what is this? Pete Todd Road, you're not on Pete Toad. Pete Toad. It's not on my GPS, by the way. I don't know why. It's a secret. Well, they're pretty small. Pete Toads. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Toads are kind of like these things, aren't they? <laughs> well, I don't know. We haven't gotten there yet. So the concept is that we have small, lightweight, reliable uh, microbots uh, weighing about uh, 100 grams, four ounces. Yeah. Have any caves been destroyed on Mars? Oh, oh yes, sure. Well, I'll show you sure. pictures of caves on Mars. Okay. Um, and, and being about 100 millimeters in diameter, about four inches. Um, they'd be very highly redundant um, and sacrificial. It means you could send thousands of them there and you came to an interesting place that would represent a real challenge of mobility, you'd send them down, say, hell with it. So you'll lose 10, 20, 100. You won't do that with a rover that you just spent $400 million on and you only have one. So people are very conservative and we're working on those rovers. They're great. They're very effective for what they do. This is a totally different paradigm. So made of largely of plastics uh, and lightweight polymers, uh, very agile. They move around by hopping, rolling, and bouncing. Autonomous <coughs> with uh, onboard power, communications, and sensing. And you might have, you're able to get what's called team behaviors, but they'd be scientifically driven team behaviors. So somebody might find something and he would say, or she would say, we haven't quite decided if they're he's or she's yet, maybe they're heterogeneous so that they can be either. So, you know, they would distribute an area and they'd find something and they'd call others over and they'd ask them what their, their response is in terms of scientific measurements and establish gradients the way that, that this particular feature might be, um, um, distribute itself, okay? So the scientific motivation, I should say we're working very closely with um, Professor Penny Boston of the National Cave and Karst Institute, on, who's our, our pet scientist in this project. Um, we call her that. Some people call her the Queen of Mars. Um, but she really knows about that stuff. So caves are wonderful because they are the, the windows into the subsurface of the planet. But they're also, if you think about a cave, it's where, if you're looking for life on a planet like Mars, it would be the repository for um, biological traces and other chemical evidence and biological evidence of, of formal life find their way into caves where they'd be uh, free from um, uh, the intense heat and the, and the, the, um, um, the, the radiation that you'd find on the surface. Um, so uh, you'd look at the underlying ge geography uh, geology, you could see whether or not there was water, which we're always looking for. They think it may be a, a, on moon and in, in, in the lunar caves, um, unique minerals. The icy surfaces are very much of an interest in that, and so the icy surfaces.